In this video, we're going to see how to link an image that's in Firebase Cloud Storage to a record in the Firebase database. This answers a question that I receive a lot on Firebase videos, which is, how can I upload an image to a Firebase database? And the short answer is, you can't. But you can get the same behavior by uploading the image to Firebase Cloud Storage and then link that image to your record in Firebase database. Let's take a look at what we have so far. We have this Firebase database, and you see there's some kind of generated unique ID here that we're going to call a key. And underneath this key, we see some information. The first key, we have a flowering dogwood in Spring Grove Village, Ohio. And the second key, we have a spice bush at CVG Airport. So similar records, just different data inside of those records. This Firebase database is essentially storing JSON data or text data. Now, over here in storage, we have an image that we've uploaded, and it's going to be just an emulator image, so it's not really a plant, but nonetheless, we can see that we are able to upload an image. Now we need to link the two together. So what are the steps? First, we need to have our Firebase database and Firebase storage set up. It's a good idea to have authentication set up as well. I've set each of these up in a previous series of videos, so I encourage you to go back through the playlist and find those videos uh, if you haven't seen them already. Next, this part is a little bit tricky. We need to add a blank URI or like a placeholder URI to the DTO that we're storing to the Firebase database. Reason being, we want to come back and update this later. And I have found if you update something that doesn't exist, Firebase doesn't always know what to do. And sometimes it will delete the record that's there and add only the field that you want to update. That could be user error on my part. So if you know a better solution, by all means, put it in the comments. But the solution that I have does work and will work for us in this video. Next, we save the DTO to the Firebase database. We get back the key. What's the key? Well, remember, that's that kind of generated thing that we were looking at that we could expand to see plant details. So this thing right here, these things that begin with a letter L, like so. Next, save the image to Firebase Storage, and then get the image URI, and then update the DTO in the Firebase database with the image URI. Some of these steps might be slightly out of sequence when we're writing them in code, but we have to remember that saving the image is an asynchronous process with a callback. So these steps might not happen in a predictable order, which is why we have to take a few extra steps. So without further ado, let's get started. We know that we're going to need to retrieve a key from the Firebase database and use it later. So let's start in our specimen DTO with a private string key, hold enter, and generate getter and setter, and we're good there. Now back to our GPS of plant activity, and let's take a look at where we're saving this specimen DTO. We're saving it right here. It's going to be easiest if we do some refactoring because you see we have a set of nested method calls going on here with a bunch of dot notation. So let's go after the push, turn that into its own line, control alt V and save that as a local variable. We'll call this one, let's say specimen reference whatever else is appropriate. And then let's go to this part that we chopped off and let's say specimen reference dot set value. So net net, we end up with the same thing. We've just split it onto two different lines here to make it a bit more convenient. And because we need an access to this specimen reference, because guess what? We can say specimen reference dot get key. And that gives us back the key that was generated when the DTO was saved to Firebase. So now we can update the DTO with the Firebase generated key. And you can do this in two lines, one line, whatever you prefer. So next line, specimen DTO dot set key. And guess what key, there we go. Note that we've already saved the specimen DTO by the time we get to this line. So we're not doing a recursive save on the key. We save the DTO, we get the key, we update the DTO with the key. Now, why do we need to do that? Because let's go up above and we see upload task on success listener and we have a to do here. Uh, we like to take care of to do's. We don't like to commit to version control with to do's. So we have to save to our database 
again, I'm going to need to reconfigure things just a little bit. I'm going to say, okay, let's take this Firebase database and get rid of a bit of white space here. Let's move this up above, right about where our storage reference is. And now I'm also going to need to make the reference final because that reference we're using in an anonymous inner class. And if we access something from the enclosing class in an anonymous inner class, it must be made final. In other words, when we make a variable final, it means we assign it one time, we cannot reassign it later. We can't put a new object in it later. We can call methods on it. We just can't put a new object in that variable later. So, okay, back down to our on success listener from the download URL, and I'm going to say reference and then child. And what do we put inside of child? Well, the reference is essentially to this very top unit. The child is the specimens right here and then the key. So reference child, and we said the child is going to be called specimens. Now we can use child to continue to walk down this tree from specimens to each individual record, but we know for each record we're going to need that key. So let's do dot child again, and now let's say specimen DTO. Ah, uh, there's our friend specimen DTO, and oh, look at that. There's get key, which we added a little bit earlier. Now uh, we also need to say child, and let's say, image URL or URI or whatever you prefer, something like that. And then we'll say dot set value and image reference, which is the URI that we acquired above. So almost there, we just have one more thing that we need to do. And that is, what's this thing called image URL? I haven't defined this yet. So one more property that we need to define on our specimen DTO. So shift shift and then specimen DTO. Let's go towards the top where we defined our key and we're going to say private string image URL just like so. Alt enter, generate getter and setter, shift shift, and we'll go right back to GPS a plan. Now, just to be safe, before we store our specimen DTO, let's go ahead and just put an empty string in this image URL because I want to make sure that it stores with something in Firebase so we can come back and update it later. So specimen DTO dot set image URL, and then we'll just put in empty string just like so. I uh, could even do a space if we wanted to. Uh, probably it's a good idea to make sure that there's not a valid URL in there in the first place. We could wrap an if test around that. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, additionally, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and update that the specimen DTO up here and say set image URL. And we will go ahead and update that to our image reference in case we need it later. So yeah, put an if test around there. Uh, additionally, there is one more thing that makes me itch just a little bit. And that is I really should wrap the entire storage reference unit here. I'm going to go ahead and do this because it's going to make me nervous. I need to make sure this URI is valid. Um, and right now I'm not verifying that. So if someone doesn't actually toggle the camera, this could end up being a problem. So I'll say if uh, URI uh, is not null, just like so, just give it a quick null check, a quick preventative check. And then we can take all of the image uploading stuff and uh, wrap it in this open and close curly, just like so. So I'll feel a little bit safer, a little more defensive with that. Uh, with this, we're in good shape. Let's take a look. A quick look at our current state. I have two images in storage right now. I did a quick, I paused the video here, did a quick demo just to make sure everything looked good and it did. So added another image and I added another record while I was doing that. Uh, the new record is for a Paul Paul at the Cincinnati Nature Center. So you see that's the most recently added specimen. Now the application is up and running. Let's go ahead and add a new plan. We'll go with Mahonia Aquifolium, Oregon Gray Poly, Broadleaf Evergreen, uh, Deer Love It in the winter. Uh, so we will put this one at Union Terminal and description will say Spring 2019. Let's go ahead and take a photo. I'll twist the camera a little bit so we can get a unique view. So we'll go with uh, something that maybe shows the couch here a little bit. And now we see our first breakpoint hits, which is the on activity result for the camera. Uh, so we will choose F8, result OK, because I did check yes. And then notice request code equals camera request code. So it does the stuff with the camera. It skips over the authorization. And then I choose F9. 
I'll throw it in, in distraction free mode, make it a little bit easier because I know we're going to see a bunch more breakpoints hit here as I choose save. So I choose save and first of all, save specimen, do we have a logged in user? Well, I have logged into this device before so we see that the user does come up with something that is not null, so it indicates that I have already authenticated. That gives us a little shortcut because we get to go right to save specimen to Firebase. I choose F7 to step into that. And first of all, we're going to populate our specimen DTO based on everything we see on the screen. Now, save specimen to Firebase, this is the method where we've been doing most of our work. And in hindsight, I realized that defaulting that image URL to a blank probably would be better suited up here where I'm calling all the other setter methods, but no worries, we can always go back and refactor. So we populate our local DTO, we get our Firebase reference, and here's where things get a little bit interesting. If the URI is not null, and it is not null in this case, then we're going to walk through and we're going to save the URI to the Firebase database, or sorry, Firebase storage rather, using this upload task. So I choose F8, and we have our listeners, our failure, and our success listener. But then you notice when I choose F8 after the success listener, it drops right down here and it updates this specimen reference, uh, this database reference. So let's take a look again and see the current state of our database. The most re recent record that I have here is the one that I did with the video paused, which was at the Cincinnati Nature Center and a common pawpaw. It is not the Oregon Gray Poly at Union Terminal, so that has not yet saved. So let's go back and take a look. Now we choose F8, F8, and now it's going to save our new record, and I'll go ahead and choose F9, and I know another breakpoint's going to hit. Hang on, we'll come back to that in just a moment. First, let's look at our database. Oh, look at this, here's a brand new record. So this new record, if I click to expand, we see is at Union Terminal, and it's a Mahonia Aquifolium, and if you do just a quick comparison to what we have on the screen, sure enough, it's the same data that we have. Our plant has indeed saved, but take a look at this image URL. You see that image URL is blank for the moment. Let's go and look at storage, and you might remember the first time we looked at this, we had two images. Let's see what we have now. So I go to the images directory, and ooh, we have a third image. I click on this third image, and let's see what it looks like. Ah, it looks like that kind of couch picture I took earlier. And you notice it has a unique URL or a unique image name. It ends with 933. Let's just remember that. Let's come back to our database and let's once again scroll towards the bottom and find that most recently record, uh, added record, the one at Union Terminal, the Oregon Gray Poly. And note the image URL is still blank. Well, we know it saved this record. We know it saved the image. We know it saved the image successfully, and now it's waiting on us on this on success callback method, which is one of the inner class listeners essentially that we associated with this upload task, which is uploading our image. So we go ahead and we choose F8, and now we get our download URL task. We get our on success listener for that, and if all works well, I set a breakpoint in there. So choose F9. And oh, well, oh, oh, nice, look at that. There's our breakpoint that's hit. And notice it's given us a URL, so HTTPS, Firebase Storage, Google APIs, so on and so forth. And now here's the cool part. We have our uh, update the existing record with this image URL. So uh, a real quick look before, blank. I'm going to choose a quick F8 and then very quickly move back over here and take a look. Do you notice where that image URL used to be blank? Now it's populated. I could even control A, control C, control uh, T, control V, uh, trim off the double quote marks, and we should be able to, sure enough, pull up our simulated image in a browser, just like so. But the important part is, you see we've made the connection between the Firebase database and Firebase storage. So I simply choose F9, and with that, we wrap up. So in summary, we have our Firebase database and Firebase storage set up. We added our blank URI to the DTO we want to save. We saved the DTO, we got a key, we saved the image to Firebase storage, we got the image URI, and then we updated the DTO in the Firebase database with the image URI. So that wraps up linking an image from Firebase storage to the Firebase database. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.